shoe, 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 shoes. And you're like, I don't know what pair to buy. I don't know what to pick. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. There are just way too many bells and whistles and bungee cords and mesh and fluorescent colors. And what's the deal with all of that? What kind of shoes should you wear? Easy response to people who are just starting out with running when it comes to sneakers is to go to the running store and get yourself fitted for a good pair of sneakers. It is good to go to a running company store to get yourself fit, but at the same time, the negative side of that is that you don't want to become reliant upon someone else's opinion. You need to know the information. So if you go there and you get fit and they tell you all these things and they have you walk or run on the treadmill and they map your foot and all that good stuff, you need to be asking them the certain questions like, what kind of pronation category do I fall into and, and how much um, stability or movement in the shoe am I going to need. Just give me all the information you possibly can to make it useful for me for when I walk out of here if I don't buy a shoe from you. <laughs> Come on, like you're going to really do that. You're going to buy the shoe from them. That would just be wrong if you went in there and had them fit you and you didn't get anything. But my point is you need to have all that information. Running company stores are amazing because they will fit you and they do know what they're talking about and they're fantastic people. And But what I can say that is negative is that their shoes are not going to be inexpensive. Running shoes are going to cost you a lot of money no matter where you go, but you shouldn't have to pay top line to get a really good pair of sneakers. So once you kind of know the basics, you should be able to arm yourself going in there. Now whether you buy your shoe online or you go into a, a store or you go and you actually get yourself fitted, it doesn't matter. You should still know in the back of your head what kind of you know foot you have, what your pronation type is, and be able to confidently pick out a pair of shoes without somebody else telling you what to buy, right? Every runner has a certain pronation. different basic types of pronation. There's a normal pronation where your foot just hits the ground and then comes off the ground the way that it's supposed to and it doesn't do anything funky. There's under pronation where your foot comes in sideways. The majority of like the stress and everything is hitting the outside of your foot and then you're taking off that way. So over pronation you are hitting the inside of your foot and it's kind of doing the opposite as under pronation so it's just putting stress on like the other side of your foot of what's happening there. <laughs> I did I I did a good explanation of what pronation is, the definition of pronation. And clearly I am not an expert, right? I'm just a seasoned veteran who has read up on this stuff time and time again. So how do you know what kind of pronator you are? What do you um, do to figure that kind of stuff out? Because you should know that, right? The first thing every single person should do is take a wet test. It's just a basic test where you get a piece of paper and a marker and you strip your feet down to nothing and you, you, know, you get them wet and you put the paper on a flat surface, you step on it, take your foot off, and then you outline the wet imprint that's there on the piece of paper. That's a really, really easy way to figure out what kind of arch you have. And arches will typically tell you what kind of pronator you are. Pause the video, get a piece of paper and a marker, and go do it right now, okay? Pause the video, and then come back. Okay, so you should have done it. If you didn't, shame on you. <laughs> if you have a very large flat looking foot that you've traced around that's a flat foot there's no arch there you tend to be an over pronator if you have an average looking foot with an average looking arch guess what you tend to be a normal pronator if you have a very skinny looking outline with no arch or barely any arch then that's called high arches and you tend to be an under pronator. Another way to do it is if you've been running long enough to have a pair of sneakers handy that you can kind of analyze, that would be another way that you could kind of figure out where you're putting the most amount of stress on your shoe. You don't need to bother looking at the bottom part of the shoe because everyone's gonna put wear and tear somewhere down at the bottom part of the heel of their shoe. But the part that you wanna look at more would be the upper part where you've got your toe and then you've got the outside of your foot. And if you've got a lot of wear and tear right around where the outside of your foot is, you underpronate. If you have a lot of wear and tear right where your, your big toe is and the inside of your foot, you overpronate. And if you have just a lot of regular, evenly dispersed um, wear and tear, you're normal. So, okay. so now that you know that sort of information, well, how
how do you figure out what kind of shoe you should have? Running companies that make shoes pretty much make three different types of lasts. Lasts would be sort of like the cast of how they make the shoe, I think. I'm not really too sure, but the last is like just how they curve the fit and how they, they um, cast the shoe, I guess. That's like the best way I can say it. You need to go out and buy a pair of shoes. Shoes fit into three different categories. The motion control shoe, which is best for people who overpronate, and it's good for collecting all of that wild motion that's going on in your foot and kind of keeping your foot right in tight where it needs to be, right? Really good for people who tend to be on like the heavier side too. Motion control shoes also tend to be like the most technical, I think, because they tend to have like technical support built in, prevent your foot from rolling too far inward. And it's built on a straight last. Oh, for Pete's sake, go already. Second category, however, stability shoe does have a firm footing, but it has more cushioning and it allows the foot to have more room to move around. Typically tend to have like an area of the midsole that's more dense with their cushioning, stability tends to fit right in the middle. And so that tends to be really good for people who are just normal prodigators. The third category would be cushioned shoes, and that is a little bit deceiving because you want every shoe to have cushion built into it, which they do. But like this shoe specifically has more of a cushioned midsole because you want to be able to allow your foot to have room because if you're hitting on the outside and you really should be moving more into the middle, cushioned shoes are built on like more curved last, which means that they just, and they don't have like any technical um, midsole devices to prevent rolling inward because you want to have the motion of your foot kind of moving more inward if you're hitting on the outside of your foot. Clearly cushioned shoes are not for over pronators. People who are under pronators would want a cushioned shoe. So, okay. some tips on like once you find your shoe. I've read it in a couple of different places that you should change your shoe every 500 miles. I sort of use it as like biblical because I like that piece of advice. You know, get your shoes, they're only for running. You shouldn't be using them to walk in or play basketball in or go to the grocery store in. They are literally only for running. Running sneakers are meant to like absorb that high impact that you're putting on them and they're just continuously being hit, 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 hit every time you go out there and run. And if you're out there doing other activities and you're putting more wear and tear on the midsole and just on the different pieces of the shoe, it's not gonna last as long. I only suggest people when they get new shoes, take the shoe on that run, you find like the dirtiest patch of running trail that you can or like a big mud puddle, totally get it dirty and trash it up a little bit. You don't want to be out there thinking that you've got like these pretty shoes and you want to keep them pretty and perfect the whole time. At least I don't. That's what I do when I get a new pair of shoes. So also, um, you want to kind of think about what season you're buying the shoe for. So being here in Maine, I would consider maybe getting accessories to go along with your winter shoe. So if you have the Axe Tracks, a couple different pairs and trying out different track um, grid, you know, devices that you put on the bottom of your shoe. You do a lot of trail running because that would be something else. I, I like to do a lot of trail running more so like in the spring because the ticks are a lot less and so I would then invest in like a, a good trail running sneaker. Um, um, you know, last but not least, don't be afraid to try something new. And I say that knowing that like I'm wicked brand loyal, but like for someone who's first out of the gate and not a seasoned runner, don't be afraid to go out there and say, I'm going to try this shoe this time, and then in the next three months I'm going to try that shoe, and then I'm going to try this shoe, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to, you know, don't be afraid to do that because the more different companies you try, the more you're going to be open to seeing what works for you and what doesn't. I am very brand loyal to Saucony. I love Saucony, and I feel like I have been with them for like at least the past 15 years, and, and I have been sold on the Grid Omni series. Currently, I'm running in the Saucony Power Grid Omni 13. But I think I started running in the Omnis when they were like like low single digits, and I just I actually loved them. Now, I am not an expert when it comes to track or like light fitting shoes or cross trainers, if that's even, I don't even know what that is. I don't know anything about those. So if you have questions on that, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Just go get a book. The library is like packed of awesome running books and so, uh, let me know what kind of sneaker you end up with if you like it if you don't if you have questions um, hopefully this might have been a tad bit helpful for you I love you my one subscriber my two subscribers and um, I hope that you guys get an awesome pair of shoes and you can lace up and go catch a run love you bye